Hello, good morning and welcome to worship. It's Alison Seiden here from the Melksham Team Ministry. You are welcome to the kitchen table this morning. We're in the fifth Sunday of Lent, so we continue journeying through, thinking about Jesus in the desert, Jesus facing his temptations and his struggles. Today, we are going to have Katie bring the sermon to us and she's actually reading and thinking about Isaiah from chapter 55. So it would be really good to have her word with us this morning. As always, words will be up on the wall beside me. If you feel you're able to join in, then please do so. Shall we take a moment to bring ourselves before God? Following God's ways is not always easy. We are called to step out in faith. We do not know what will happen tomorrow. We are called to put our trust in God. We know that God's love is always with us. We know that God never abandons us. Come, let us worship. Come, join together in following Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, in these uncertain times of empty moments and foggy brains, we are reminded that you forget more than we will ever remember. You forgive so much more than we are capable of messing up. You crack open our hardened hearts to write your name on them. Redeemer of all, we praise you. When we were afraid to even venture outside, you stayed at our side. When we took those tentative walks around our neighbourhoods, you held our hands. When we stare at the ceiling on those long lonely nights, you point to your watch and remind us that the hour was coming and wait with us. Generous Spirit, we praise you. God in community, holy in one, we open our mouths to sing your praise. Amen. We are going to continue in worship by singing and I thought today it would be good to just draw ourselves before God in stillness. So we're going to sing together, be still for the presence of the Lord. Wherever we are, however we gather, God's presence is there for us. When we still ourselves and feel that presence, it opens our hearts and brings us closer to God. So we sing this morning, be still for the presence of the Lord.
been thinking about the presence of God with us. We stay in that place of stillness for a moment as we think about how we are living our lives and we have a time to say our sorry to God. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins. In silence we bring our prayer to God. Lord God, our Maker and our Redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill-treatment tre ill of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to a new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Hannah is going to bring our first reading to us this morning. Thank you, Hannah. This reading is taken from Hebrews 5 verses 5 to 10. It is the same with Christ. He did not choose himself to have the honour of becoming a high priest, but God chose him. God said to him, you are my son and today I have become your father. And in another part of the scripture, God says, you are a priest forever the kind of priest Melchizedek was. While Jesus lived on earth, he prayed to God, asking for help from the one who could save him from death. He prayed to God with loud cries and tears, and his prayers were answered because of his great respect for God. Jesus was the son of God, but he still suffered, and through his sufferings, he learned to obey whatever God says. This made him the perfect high priest 
who provides the way for everyone who obeys him to be saved forever. God made him high priest, just like Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Katie will bring the Isaiah reading and her words on the passage. Good morning. Uh, today's reading comes from the book of Isaiah from chapter 55 verses 1 to 5. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labour on what does not satisfy. Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendour. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Loving God, I pray that this morning I would speak in your name, bringing glory to you, that we may know you more. Amen. So, this last year has been really difficult, hasn't it? So it has been a year now. We are living in unsettling, uncertain and often fearful times. Our whole world has been turned upside down. We have experienced huge loss in terms of human life. We've experienced fear, fear for employment, worried about the education of our children. We have missed human touch and interaction with our loved ones and our friends. I think it's fair to say that in many ways, we long for our old lives, the freedom we had, the opportunities that we knew, and to be able to look to the future with some sense of confidence and, and of course, looking to the future when we can once again hug our loved ones and hold them tight. And now, of course, we do have some hope. We have the uh, magnificent rollout of the vaccination programme and we hope and pray that in the not too distant future, once again, we will enjoy all these things that we have missed. The reading that we heard today from the book of Isaiah comes from a time when the Jewish people had been exiled into Babylon. This passage was at the time when they were just about being freed. They were again feeling hopeful for the future. They were going to be returning from exile and going, going home to Jerusalem. These people had been forced from their land into a strange new existence, one of fear, one of uncertainty. They would have lost many people, their own family and friends, and they would have feared for their own lives. They struggled in every way, physically, emotionally, spiritually. They did not know what the future held and would have had to adapt to this new life the best way that they could. Now, although I don't believe for one second that we can compare ourselves with an exiled people in this way. 
we can surely recognise the feelings of despair, of fear, of confusion and sorrow at, at human suffering. This last year has almost been an exile for us from our normal lives. And for those of us with faith and even with no faith actually, in these type of circumstances, for us and for those Jewish people, we, can, we question, where is God in all of this? Do we feel like some of those Jewish people might have felt? Maybe they felt abandoned. I wonder, do we feel abandoned to some extent? But we do know that God had far from abandoned those Jewish people in exile, just as he has not and will not abandon us. Instead, we find him offering the most wonderful invitation, a calling back for those people to himself. And for many of us, this year has been a time of re-evaluation of our lives. How many times have we heard it said, and maybe even said ourselves, that th this year, this situation has made us realise what is truly important in our lives. And we are at a turning point now. Do we return to our old ways? Do we lose all that we have learnt? Or do we embrace a new a new way of life? And do we embrace that invitation that God gave to those Jewish people and gives to us too? Those words of God would have spoken straight into the heart and situation of those exiled people. The language of being thirsty would have had meaning to them but I wonder what it means for us today. Are we thirsty? Do we labour and put all our energy into things that do not satisfy us? I think we have done. We have invested much time and money into many things that instead of nourishing us and feeding us, instead they leave us wanting. They leave us kind of dehydrated and malnourished spiritually. But here God is inviting us to a feast. And through his son Jesus, that feast is not just one that fills a hole for a little while, but it is the richest affair, the best, the best of the best that will nourish us, sustain us and grow us for eternity. If we would come to him and listen, digest his word into our very beings, he offers us life beyond compare, a life of joy, an eternal life. And we know, we know that we are not promised an easy life that is going to be completely free of difficulty or struggle or heartache but he offers us himself to be there alongside us with all the strength that we need and the comfort too and Jesus said of himself and maybe he was thinking of this verse I am the bread of life and he also said that whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst and it is through his sacrifice and the power of the resurrection in his body and blood that we are able to enter into this feast. The eternal feast of heaven that all people are invited to. And his guests at this feast, the most wonderful thing is that we are allowed to bring a plus one or maybe even more than one these nations that Isaiah was speaking of, 
people that don't know us and we don't know them, these are the ones that we invite. And we do that by telling them of Jesus, who he is, what he has done for us. And most of all, we do it by showing the ways of God. All those things that as a society, we have come to learn and be in this last year. Showing love, showing compassion to our neighbours, speaking up against those things that are wrong in our societies and showing selfless hospitality to strangers. All these things show and express the love of God and his invitation to each of us through Jesus to come and be fed at his table, to know a life of abundant joy in the promise of God's love for eternity that we do not have to labour for and no money is needed as the price has already been paid for us in the sacrifice of Jesus. So we have a choice to accept this invitation from God that was first for the Jewish people but is indeed for all of us. And as we begin to exit our own exile, how do we want it to look? Who do we want to be? And how do we want to be? As a people of God, what, we have, what have we learnt of ourselves in this time? What have we learnt about church? Is God all we need? Or is there things that we labour for? which do not feed and sustain us completely. The invitation is there. It is free and given in love. God is calling each, each of us and the whole creation back to him into a life of joy and a life of fullness. He has not and will never abandon us. Through Jesus and the Holy Spirit, he is with us always. And all we have to do is tuck in, listen, know, and feast on his word as a guest at his heavenly table. Amen. Thank you so much, Katie, for those words that inspire and challenge, make us think. So thank you for those. Shall we declare our faith in God in the words of the Creed? Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. When we say the creed together and we think about the nature of God, the power of love that God is and brings, we're going to sing together the power of your love.
chances I see in me will be stripped away by the power of your love. to invite Nettie to bring us our intercessions. As your family we gather here today not because we have to but because we want to. We are here to offer you our worship, our prayers and our lives in service to you and to our neighbour. We have as our example your son who chose not to rule but to serve, who gave of himself and you a love so strong that it flowed like a river from his hands and his heart. We pray for a world torn apart by conflict and war, a world that lives uneasily in a climate of fear, with no clear vision for future days. We pray for a world that thinks less of others than of self, a world where division between nations, race, religion, neighbour and family leads to distrust. We pray for a world that needs to know your love, your hope, 
your peace, your joy and salvation. For the church here and across the world, all bishops, priests and leaders, that they will faithfully fulfil the role bestowed on them to preach God's covenant to the world. For a renewal in our personal commitment to the way of Christ. We pray especially for the interregnum, for those involved in the shortlisting for the new team rector. We pray for wisdom and discernment. May we, like Christ, be more ready to give than to condemn and daily live our lives transformed by the gospel message of forgiveness and mercy. We pray for everyone who is sick or afraid, bereaved or isolated around the world, and we pray for all who support them. May God grant each of them peace and comfort, courage and perseverance. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And shall we join those prayers together? As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Having prayed for our world and having spoken the words of the Lord's Prayer, we now spend time sharing in the peace, not as we would if we were gathered, but in our hearts with intention and with love. We spread that peace throughout our home, throughout our town and throughout our nation and wider into the world. So since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And in that place of peace, we come to a time where we think of the meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. It was the Passover. The people were joining together to celebrate to spe this special event. And Jesus gathered in an upper room around a table with his friends. He would have had bowls of food and flat bread to dip. There would have been a jug of wine. And as they gathered and as they spoke, Jesus was reminding them of everything he had been teaching them on their journey and giving them gifts to remember on the way, helping them with what was to come so that they might know and understand and they might recognise when everything was complete they would remember this night they would remember Jesus' promises so we have a meal of remembrance wherever we are Jesus knows what it is to wander to watch and to wrestle in desert places and he waits to meet us and welcome us offering us rest and restoration solace and strength for the journey still to come before going out into the wilderness of the garden jesus sat down to eat and drink with his friends to show them the challenge of the way ahead and offer them gifts for that journey he took bread sustaining and wholesome and poured wine earthy and warming, sharing these as signs of his continu continuing presence with them throughout time to come. He said to those he loved, eat and drink in remembrance of me. 
and now, remembering that moment and recognising its promise that is also for this time and this place, for you and for me. We too take and eat and drink. And in that action we recognise that Christ is present with us now and throughout the time to come. And we join our voices with those of all creation in an ending, in an unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God of the in-between places, send down upon us now the same spirit who drove Jesus into the desert, that we too may be tempered and strengthened by your presence and refreshed and renewed through your love. So we take, we eat and we drink. I don't know what you have today, I've got a ginger biscuit that we made last week on Mothering Sunday on Messy Zoom. But whatever it is, it's in the eating and in the drinking and in the remembering that we draw closer to God. Let us pray together. God has called us to a journey through the wilderness places and so as Jesus did before us we will set out once more to wander in uncomfortable landscape, to wrestle with its challenges that through the tempering action of the Spirit we may emerge ready to do the work of the Kingdom. Amen. Isn't that quite some thought? The thought that through this power of the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that drove Jesus into that desert, that you and I are filled and made ready, supported in all the challenges that we face, guided when we listen and helped on that journey. We come to a time of notices. Do please make sure you look at the screens after the service this morning and you'll see a list there of service times and places that we were hope to gather as church together. If you are feeling that you're still not quite confident enough to come into church then don't worry we will still be having a service here from the kitchen table so you won't be left alone that will be going on way past when church reopens we will be here at the kitchen table serving you in the way we can from here it's important to understand that all of the notices and dates that are given are of course subject to change because of Covid so if there is a spike or if anything happens um, we may have to make changes. We will endeavour to let you know as soon as we know but our plans are there and we are praying that we might meet together safely with masks and clean hands and plenty of space and with our numbers restricted to 55 in St Michael's and 30 in St Andrews. But do please come along if you are able and we will begin to take those tentative steps. Worship will still be slightly different, we won't be able to sing yet but we are there to praise together so you will be very welcome 
across the threshold of the church building. If you are um, able to help in any way, the churches of course will need a bit of a cleaning team and I'm sure that many of you will have emails asking if you're able to help to make preparations. Don't forget that we are having an Easter garden outside St Michael's and if you are able to we would love you to paint a pebble with something that symbolises your journey, what's taking you to the tomb. It might be a love heart, it might be a rainbow, it might be an image that you have in your heart for, of the wilderness. But if you've got one just draw, paint, decorate however you will and come along in the week between Palm Sunday and Easter Day and create a path up to the tomb that you will find in the churchyard. We are also hoping to have flowers to put into that Easter garden or around the Easter garden. So if you have a little pot, maybe a, a primula or something like that, that you would like to, to come and put around in the garden, somebody will be there to help to sort it out and it would be lovely to do that. So bring them on Easter morning if you're coming to church, if you've got one, and it will make the Easter garden look beautiful and alive just as Christ rises. We too celebrate that new birth, the renewal and the life of spring that we have. So that would be great if you wouldn't mind. In other matters, as always, do please support your local churches if you can. Um, all the fax details are up on the screen or the food bank and today I am actually going to ask you to really think about whether you are able to give some gifting towards the Disaster Emergency Committee. They are an agency that helps lots of different agencies so it all comes together in the one fund and it's a, an efficient way of making sure your money is used well. The world is actually really struggling at the moment. Yemen has famine like, the, um, you'll have seen the pictures I know on screen. You'll have heard the story of the misery people are having to endure. Places like war-torn Syria too. We struggle. We struggle with the pandemic here, we struggle with all sorts of things, but we have infrastructure, we have support, we have networks of love and care, and we are not bombarded by bombs or driven out of our homes or stolen away. The world is very broken and it needs us to help in its healing and in its care. So do give generously, if you can, to the DEC. That would be much appreciated. Thank you. So remember, everything is fluid. We'll keep in touch as much as we can. But I'll be here at the kitchen table, way beyond gathering at church. So we'll be still here. I'll be back here on Wednesday at the kitchen table. And I will be back next Sunday but we'll also be thinking about Palm Sunday in church. Do please realise of course that everything is subject to change. If there's a sudden spike in the area or things go um, things go wrong we will let you know but that's our plan. Let's sing together. Dear Lord and Father of Mankind
blessed to have a God that loves us and in the midst of change and uncertainty when things feel beyond our control which of course they are we know that they are in God's hands and everything we do we do with God beside us God behind us God before us I really hope that gives you strength and comfort as you Go on into this coming week. So wherever you are, whoever you are, never forget that you are God's community. Share God's enduring love this week. Whoever you are, wherever you might be, know always that Christ is alive in you. Share Christ's enduring light into the shadows of uncertainty this week. Now, in this moment and in every moment to come, remember you are gifted by the Spirit. Share those gifts of grace, of hope, of justice, of peace with everyone you meet this week. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We've got our final blessing to enjoy at the end of the service. Bye bye. God bless. Shine.
shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. His favor be upon 